Hello and welcome to Be Powerful with Liz and Lee. It's a new day and we're so glad you're here. So you can expect to hear candid conversations on what it means to be powerful. Live authentically, live in the midst of ups and downs, productively, and above all else, joyfully. We are so thankful for you, our community of listeners, and we hope you enjoy today's show. Hi. Good afternoon. What's up? Everything is up. <laughs> you are up. What's happening? Okay, I uh, have mm-hmm. um, just straight to the point. What? Okay, this what? is what we're covering today. Yeah, because I we have haven't thoughts. talked. We've, we haven't, we but have I've not talked to myself. Okay. <laughs> just so we're clear. I'm yeah. not clear. You are clear. Right. So mm-hmm. I want to ask you, and feel free to ask me back, but mm-hmm. this is not about me. Um, I want to know what driving passions in your life set you forward Besides to where you, you are what today. Do you what do you yes. mean driving passions in my life? Think about it. And mm-hmm. I want to know what's the best risk you've ever taken and when you've had a setback or let's call it a failure or a whatever, an obstacle, how you dealt with it. Okay. So that was I like five plan. things. And what no, are, it's just three things. Okay. Well, let's name them. First, the question is... First is, what are the driving passions in your life oh, okay. that have gotten you, gotten you to where you are today? Okay. And then within that... Mm. Biggest risk, biggest mm-hmm. setback, and how you overcame it. Wow. You ah, came in strong today, girl. I know. Well, welcome to Be Powerful Podcast with Liz and Lee. It looks like <laughs> we're going to go straight into power, right? <laughs> totally. Um, okay. So, was the uh, what was the driving passion or something like that? Yeah. I mean, think about all the passions you've had in your mm-hmm. life. How did they get you on your yeah, career I gotcha. path? How did they get you to me? Yeah. Um, freedom. Okay. Whoa. I always, I mean, I start there. I mean, honestly, I think that if, um, I would answer that differently on different days, but I mean, if you have to look at the overall essence of, of, of who I am or, Mm -hmm. you know, my whole, my whole thing about being here is freedom to express the way I choose without the penalty or the barriers of, uh, society or even, and especially, my own barriers uh, that I put on myself. So my goal, I didn't know that until right. it's really, really good to live longer because you <laughs> learn that, oh, that was my goal all along. I wouldn't sure. have known that. Freedom, freedom to express. Well, when you have the freedom to express and you really know that you're able to do anything, mm. really mm-hmm. know, and, mm-hmm. and, and you're not, and you're going to be okay if people go, it's not cool that you're doing that and you do it anyway then you are limitless. And not that I'm limitless, but I am, I'm free. And I love that. So I get to do my, my passion is asking the others to do the same for themselves, to find their own freedom. And freedom comes to me in many ways, but it it starts physically with health and I want good health. Okay. How would you define freedom? Let's start there Mm. because I think it has different connotations and visuals and Mm -hmm. meanings for different Mm -hmm. people. So for you, right? what does freedom mean? And we've talked about that before as, you Mm -hmm. know, I kind of want to go back in your life, you know, like when did that word become such a tagline? And I don't think it has. I think it's easier for you to, in in retrospect, to embrace the freedom. Right. I can, I can name it. Have you redefined it over time, I guess, is also the question. No, I have not redefined Ah. it. I found the word. I didn't know Ah, the word. ah, ah. Um, because I can, I have a really good memory and especially of being little right. and actually being really little, mm-hmm. like a, in a crib little. That's crazy. And very first thing I remember about being in the world was holding on to bars and crying because I had no words. Mm-hmm. Just get me out of here. There's, there's a barrier between me and the things I want to do. And yeah. I don't have a clue how old I was, but I was crying. You were crib age. I was I was in a crib. <laughs> and not in yeah, jail. Yeah, not crib in jail. Bars. So far, no jail. So far. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. I, I And that was like, oh, and then I remember the sense of adventure. And I, don't we all have that when you're a little small child and you go mm-hmm. outside or I lived outside. Mm-hmm. Luckily for me, I came up in the 60s and 70s right. where parents are like, get out of here until the sun sets, we'll call you for dinner. Okay. <laughs> that was, my, thank you. That was a right. great thing. I, my freedom was in expressing myself. And mm-hmm. when I realized I had to be like in school or be uh, boundaried and barriered 
and had to behave a certain way or else I would be ridiculed and not, not accepted, then I had to, I, I struggled. I struggled against, and, and I don't think it's authority at all. I just think it's against overstructure, overstructure, not, a, not a being allowed to be who I was. Yeah. So as you age, you look at that and you look at what you might call rebelliousness when you're in your teens or your 20s or your acquiescence to what society thinks you should do in your late 20s, 30s. You get married, you have children, you do all those great things. Sometimes we're lucky. We get great mates that we marry. Sometimes we aren't lucky. The freedom of choosing to be in a relationship or not a relationship is good. The freedom of being able to express myself with people that I am no longer in their lives or in their, you know, I, I'm talking about, I'm sorry, that was your foot I'm stepping <laughs> it on. It felt good for a minute. Wait, for a minute, I was like, what is that soft thing under my foot? It feels <laughs> so foot. good. And it's your foot. It felt good for a minute. And, and, then, like, whoa, and then I started whoa. pressing down, right? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, it just, I think that we're all hungry to express ourselves mm-hmm. and we're all diminished by the fact that we feel unworthy or unable or unallowed to express yeah. ourselves. And that's my freedom. Right. Is expression. Right. And once you have the freedom to express, then you are limitless. Less, limitless. Back to that. You literally are limitless. You right. literally are. Now, expressing yourself in a negative way by murdering or killing sure. or maiming or doing the ba- the things that get you landed in jail. That's not a good idea now, is it? But when you're really free, I don't think you have those desires. No psychology here. I'm just talking about me. You asked me. Yeah, and I think that's an important delineation Mm -hmm. of defining what that means for you. Because even though freedom has such that ring of positivity, I do think because of the structures Mm -hmm. that are set up in our society. Keeps a lot of people in line. Right. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. To a degree that is no longer. Free. And right. if you are expressing yourself, then you're crossing lines. And so it, you don't feel that full right. freedom. I, but are, I, I would posit the question to all of humanity, are we really born as bad people or are we born free and just trying to express ourselves? And because we are put in positions that squelch that freedom, some of us come out and we're murderers or we're bad people and we do bad things to other people, but it's an expression out of rage, out of hurt. I mean, Mm -hmm. all in rage, just pretty much fear on steroids. Yeah. I mean, just rage and, and trying to hurt others. That is really squelched freedom, you know? And 100%. I would mean, I would for sure go with the second that we are all born. Mm-hmm. you know, good in, in quotations. And, I would hope so. And again, we're not nature, nurture, you know, kind of comes into play. Right. And, and so when you get to whether it's institutions, a lot of times in most countries, and especially in America, you think of any of the countries with strong religious backgrounds, Deep South. a lot of it's the religious doctrine. Sure. And that leads to so many difficulties Mm -hmm. uh, for men and women. It's an easy call to say women have lost their freedoms, and we have in many ways, and we're having to fight now more than ever for our own freedom to be dignified and and self-autonomous. But men have too, because they've had to play this role that says, I'm in charge. And some of them really, that's no fun either. No. Nobody needs this stuff like thrown on them. You know, right. So freedom to me is um, a rite of passage. If you get to that place in your life, maybe it's at 17, maybe it's at 70, whatever age you are. But if you have a sense of freedom of expression Mm. and you're not carrying a lot of rage, Mm. but you're actually carrying a lot of love and that's what I carry. um, Why do you think you're sculpted in that way where you did have the freedom of expression yet you had the, the balance and the boundaries of love and support? I mean, parents... Certainly. They're in the mix. The mm-hmm. parents, the uh, luck of the draw being born in a, in a country that right. I was clothed and fed and felt nurtured. Privileged. I was I was nurtured. You know, yeah. some children are not nurtured right. from crib up, right? That's a hard question to answer. I think a lot of us are born with these like genetic makeups. I think I am. That is just whether it's, you could say it's anything, psychological, right. Past lives, whatever it is, I 
I used to be a little tiny child and I could say certain words, but one of my mantras was, I'm the spirit of Liz, make out, made like a whiz. And all I did was run around my house without my panties. I'll never mention that part. <laughs> and my mom would like chase me around because I wouldn't wear underwear. I remember being Real really free, little free and doing dumb, this. And, and I would turn, <laughs> turn on her and go, I'm the spirit of Liz, made like a whiz, and then I'd dash off. I mean, the hell? That's I mean, so where'd that come from? It's just who you are. <laughs> it, it's carried through so much. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to say that particularly, but you are saying no. be powerful. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you are still kind of standing, standing My your whizziness. ground, yes. standing your ground and, you know, yes. holding fast to your whizziness. And, and when I is, wasn't standing my ground, when I wasn't standing mm-hmm. my ground, um, I was uh, unhappy. Uh, I what was, does that mean? Meaning I was constricted. It's okay to be constricted. You, know, you don't want your children running out in traffic. You want your children sure. to have certain, uh, you know, talents and, and wherewithals to live in the society they live in. But there's also a way to allow them to be themselves. Mm-hmm. And there are you know, certain groups of people that do that. But I want to go back to being like three. Okay. I'm thinking about my own daughter. And she at three is who she is today. Mm. There is something about those early years right. of who you were that, that you always you are. are. Interesting. Because you don't have the you don't have the limit the limits on yourself. You you have people saying, I told you not to touch that hot pot on the thing. It's gonna burn your fingers. You have people telling you that, but they aren't telling you behave like this yet. They'll start doing it Close. probably around four or five. I'm not even sure what how, what age. I, it didn't take in me for a while. Well, I think it depends. I so, think that's happening all the time. It just, yeah. which way is that parenting going? Yeah. Well, at think, that point. Yes. I think you keep your children sad. loved, nurtured, and out of traffic and, <laughs> and let them go. Let them be, let them be yeah. crazy fun, whatever their craziness is. Be themselves. The first trip I ever had went to a doctor was when I was swinging on a vine and hit a tree and got a 10 stitch gash in my leg. I was with a bunch of guys, boys, five years older than me, mm-hmm. out in the woods playing Tarzan. Tarzan. But that was like so much fun until it wasn't. But really you kept painful. doing that. I mean, I think you've told me a lot of stories about yeah. how you always played with your older brother and his friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that my, yeah. shapes you when you have to play up when you're playing. Yeah. With the boys when you're a girl, when yeah. you're trying to, a tomboy. to keep Love up, it. I think that mm-hmm. definitely shapes who you are and who you were and who you are today. Well, also you're, you're looking at, you know, you're, say you're five, they're 10, their authority, you're subservient, yeah. but nobody's really caring what you're doing right. at the same time. Plus you got a protector. You've got a hero, your brother, who's, you know, checking your back, making sure they don't pummel right. you. He can pummel the crap out of you, but they can't. So, <laughs> you know, just, you got that. So you get to be like, I love being around boys. Boys were the most fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love my girlfriends too, but I would get bored doing, once I was older, yeah. like playing Barbies or something after a while. Sure. I needed to be running around the running neighborhood free. being crazy <laughs> and fun. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it so explains you. <laughs> and I just think... You learn the rules when you play with other children and the children create the rules. You don't learn the rules when an authority figure just tells you what to do. So when you have to go out, you know, survival of the fittest and and figure out. Plus you can figure out where you are in your tribe. Exactly. Yeah. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. And it's, it leads to how do you get along with your people? Yep. How do you treat other people? I mean, you don't want to be like that guy that, what's his name? God, Tuttle was his last name. He was the meanest <laughs> boy I ever met in my life. And just mean. Why uh-huh. do you, why would I want to be like him? Right. You know, either way. Yeah. Sorry. Leadership. I mean, I think all those basic <laughs> basic skills. stuff. Basic stuff. So that we're losing now with a little there's bit of the what you have. Well, th- at the same time, we're in a different world where you need some of that. But I would really, really find ways to allow and and really ask your children and people to Free play. Get out of here. And going to working out. If you're not having fun doing it, you're not going to do it. Remember, play is a natural tendency for human beings, all human beings, all animals, every animal, every human being, we all have a tendency to want to play. And we get that either taught out of us, beat out of us, whatever, or we just go, well, now we have a role to play. Right. But even in our roles as adults and taking care of children, we can play. Mm-hmm. 
We play all the time, me and you. I know. I think it's super important. I love that correlation to the workout because that is what it is. is I mean, we wouldn't be, you wouldn't be doing it after this long. I wouldn't be doing it as much as I do. It better be fun or I'm not doing it. After this long. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, Or, you know, that's not enjoyable. And so go back to talking about rebellion, right? So Mm -hmm. freedom was the driving, Mm -hmm. being yourself, having Mm -hmm. that support, Mm -hmm. um, recognizing that within yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you remember times when you were more rebellious and what that looked like? Yeah. Kind of go hand in hand. Uh, Yeah. I'm not sure I can say this on the air. (laughs) (laughs) We all know how important it is to fuel yourself just right every morning. Liz, what's your jet fuel? It's the HSM smoothie, of course. Obviously. But also, I've got a new little thing You've got a new friend? From Saqqara Life, the metabolism super powder is your go-to. It fires up your metabolism, curbs sugar cravings, helps ease bloat, and is it delicious? Oh, it's so good, especially in your coffee. It's got ah, a great taste. Dump you're it in the coffee, it. blend it dump up. Dump it and in go. the coffee, blend it, and be excited because you're going to love it. <laughs> Y'all go to sakaralife.com. When you check out, you'll receive 20% off your order, which is a great deal by using the code XO Liz HSM. That's X O L I Z H S M for 20% off your order at sakaralife.com. Why? What caused the rebellion? Well, I, it's funny. I never had to rebel against my parents. Mm-hmm. My parents were like, eh, it's Liz. She's going to go. <laughs> She's somewhere around here. She Just start yelling and she'll be home in about an hour. They okay. never worried, worried. So I never rebelled against my authority at home. Okay. But I softly and quietly rebelled every breath I took when I was in school. Mm. I mean, I was like, this is a waste of my time. Right. I mean, that's <laughs> this is not, a total waste of my time. Right. I hated school except for the really interesting parts like history or something. You get a great, you know, person that's your teacher or that actually recognizes that, you, that you're not just the regular. Right. Not, I'm not saying I was irregular or special. I'm just saying I didn't always think it was fun. And why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. Why do I need to know the dates? Of all the battles, why can't I know what the women were wearing? <laughs> you know, and what the warriors were wh- killing people. Exactly. I mean, what, what's up with this date situation? Or um, uh, now, math. I do regret that. I wish I had not been so rebellious in math. I wish I'd listened because I really I think math is one of the keys to life. <laughs> you heard it here first. I mean, I really do. Liz Hilliard, math is the key to life. Well, okay. I mean, math is really practical and it's also useful. And it's also the only thing that doesn't lie. Math is doesn't oh, lie. Isn't that deep? I mean, I don't want to be really that deep about math because I my skills go very, very, You're very shallow. Surface level. Very shallow skills here. But um, math is a really good thing. I would ask my children to do math. Okay. Yeah. Because it's just to do it sort of works things out. I mean, I Yeah, there's no an answer. Life. There is an answer. It's solvable. It's so- exactly. Life is Concrete. hard to solve. Right. And I'm not okay. trying to solve life. I'm just trying to live it, live the joy, but I think there's a mathematical equation in that. I just don't know it. <laughs> I'll let you know when we find it. Yeah. Okay, so rebellion and setback. Mhm. Setbacks, risks, risks, things you've done and what Mhm. happened after. Mm. So you're asking me if I want to take risks or I have. did take risks? Oh, did. you know I have. I know. I mean, it's, it's a, all of us might, some of us might think we don't take risks, but every single person takes a risk when you're at the door every morning. And I True. think we all have a sense of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have always taken risks. Um, I started risking my life when I was with the boys running <laughs> around and we were playing basketball and that's why I was so good at basketball. Yeah. I got, finally met my girls. I love my girlfriends in like fifth, sixth grade when we started playing at the rec center. Nobody had organized sports as, as children in my day and age in the 60s, 70s, which means that was great. And it was also not great mm. because women were not, you know, encouraged to have sure. sports. But we found our way. And thanks to Billie Jean King and a few other great people, they now they made it into Title XI and people actually go to school for sports now. That's another podcast. What was the question though? Um, okay. So the times in your lives where you have taken risk, big risks. Risk. Was when sports did they? Me that? work for you? When did you right. kind of have meet setbacks and if, what happened? If, if I could tell my young self anything, it mm. would be to walk in the door, to make the call, to... I was afraid as because I was taught that I was not smart. I was taught by getting C's that I was not as good as the people that made A's. Yeah, I was taught by getting a couple of D's too. F here and there, but whatever. That, <laughs> that is your teacher saying... 
you can't risk yourself and go into a business mm-hmm. or you can't, you should just, um, remember my 11th grade teacher who yeah. told me you should forget about all these aspirations and you should become an airline stewardess. That's what they called them then, not flight attendants. Wait, but what were your aspirations that she was putting down? Um, do you remember? I don't remember. Uh, I was so excited because I was making an A in psychology because that oh, turned wow. me on too. psychology and makes math. sense. I went, Oh wow. I think I could major mm-hmm. in this in, in college. And she goes, um, I'm not quite sure you're going to be a college material girl. You probably need to be an airline stewardess. I was like, whoa, okay. Mm-hmm. Confirmed. That was a confirmation. Mm-hmm. So the risk that I would tell her, that girl, me at 16 or 17, whatever I was in junior year in high school, oh, wouldn't it be fun to have that knowledge now? I would rebel against that. I wouldn't. I was rebelling against some of the wrong things. Sure. I believed her, whereas I should have rebelled against that comment or that advice. But you're not sure of yourself. And I don't even blame the teachers that say things like this. They're in their roles too. They're doing the best they can. I don't think she was saying that in a malicious way. I think she was trying to help me. Yeah. That's interesting. Let's fast forward though. Risk taking is my jam. (laughs) It's what I do. And I didn't always do it well. And I didn't always do it. But once I took a risk and it worked out, maybe it was a small risk. Maybe it was saying to my then husband, I want to be a fashion model, even Mm -hmm. though I'm 31. And he's like, what? Yeah. (laughs) Aren't you too old? And A, and B, you have a child and all those things. And they're really going, no. And I got to, you know, we're working in those times of our lives out of what we knew. But I did it anyway. And he didn't like it. And it worked out beautifully because Mm. I did, that was one of my, that was really the, the taste of entrepreneurship that I finally got because I realized since I didn't fit in to the spaces of you didn't get your PhD in this or I didn't didn't get a bachelor's. I got an associate degree in dental hygiene. I, I didn't have any of those things. So I couldn't walk into an office and go, can I have this job? Or I didn't think I could. Right. And I probably couldn't have because, I mean, I could have, but I would have really been harder. Mm. But what I did was I learned that I could make it up myself. Well, that's exactly the yeah. point. I mean, I love that because it's, you're not relying on any sort of data, any sort of past thing, any yeah. sort of, uh, you know, accolade or goal. Mm-hmm. You're really relying on yourself and who you are. It's all I And got. somebody doesn't have to like it, but yeah. <laughs> they're getting, you know, 100% right. you and not like a list of of things. But and, and even in this day and age, it's hard to do that, to have a risk. I it mean, is. A risk that says, oh, I mean, honestly, truthfully, I really could have used a degree back in the yeah. day. I really could have used it. I could have still been an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. I could have still had that energy for that entrepreneurialship. And, and that's, but again, the older I get, the more risk I take, for instance, the Hilliard Studio Method. And I have more confidence now in what I'm doing. Sure. Business is like anything else. You do it enough, you practice it enough, you get it. And then you realize it's just common sense. And there's a whole lot of fucking mathematics in it too. (laughs) I'm just telling you. And you want good people on your team that know those mathematics that can help you with judgment and how this is going to fall, where is this going to rise, how is this going to work. And then it's really your personality going after it. Entrepreneurship is the most fun game I've ever played. Oh, I love that. It's so much fun. And it, and oh, and the risk is huge. Do you think it's been more physical risk, um, an actual financial risk, or has it been more emotional risk? To All put of the above. yourself. Let's go with emotional one. Okay. B- uh, money too. I mean, God, you I mean, know, come on. You, you're closed down during a pandemic. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't have that much business experience. I can't go out and, oh, I think I'll work, I'll work at the bank or something. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. You are owning a fitness studio and you have X amount of business, you know, acumen, acumen. Behind, under your belt, on your resume. I mean, I would go head to head with a lot of people business-wise. I really would. Yeah. It sounds I think you really, have. really sort of like no, I'm bragging. It, it, you, but you already have because you own a successful business. I'll I mean, give me that. <laughs> and so, yes, you couldn't maybe do every business out there, but oh, you found no. But there's a path. common thing yeah. about running a business, just like running a family, just 
Like, I think that's why women are so good at it. Mm -hmm. And women are finally stepping into those roles of business more because we're so good at it. We can do so many things at one time. Yeah. And we also understand that, I mean, what do I love about our little group at Hilliard is, I mean, today, Carrie had her 18 14 months, months, 14 months in. It's so much fun. I have no, <laughs> there's no problem with that. If I was the, um, if I was running a bank and my employee needed to bring a 14 month in, I'd be cool with it. I'm a woman. We understand a lot of things. You get your work done and it, and I don't care what time you're doing it. You get it done on time. No, you get it done on time. <laughs> but I think being a woman is a real asset in managing people. I agree 100%. Yeah, I think it's a real asset. I think men do an incredible job and obviously they've been they've been running things for a mm-hmm. long time but I think what you're seeing is women coming up these ladders or just op- or just building their own damn ladder and showing up in places where you went. We're not trying to be men. See, I, I'm not yeah. going head to head with a man going, uh, you know, my dick is not as big as yours. But I mean, oh you know, I'm not trying to prove exactly. anything. I'm simply trying to have a passion, yeah. make a business out of it, include the people that want to also be in that business and give them the things they need to build their lives up. This is not a dick show. We're trying to encourage and empower people. I think businesses should do that everywhere. I hate using words like should, but kind of so. Kind of so. Kind of so. I mean, it works differently for everyone with, you know, different industries understood. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beauty of what you as a company, as a person are trying to do. It's that here's the goal. Let's get it done. I support you through that. I mean, there don't have, there doesn't have to be insignificant rules and regulations yeah, the whole eight to just five because thing, I'm it's looking, an institution. Right. I I'm mean, looking at, we got to get our, we, we've got to get our businesses exercise. We got to get our exercise classes done when they're supposed to be done. We have to have our back office making sure all those things get done well before they're done. We have to have our marketing. We have to all the whole, all the teams have to coordinate so that you not only succeed in this business, but you excel in this business and then you expand. What do you do when you expand? You expand for other people to also engage in a passion yep. and grow their own business. So it's simple and I love doing it. You're good at it. Thank you. Well, it has a lot to do with you. We know that. We know that for sure. Let's flip it. Yeah, let's do it. Flip the script to personal risk. Me personal? I'm just curious. (laughs) As in being with you in my- Yeah, was that the biggest risk? Romantic life. Uh-huh. Or was your biggest risk having like three fiancés at once? Ah, that's a tough one. I had two fiancés at once. No, my biggest risk was the risk I took with you. Okay, good. Definitely. I mean, (laughs) yeah, to come outside of my team, (laughs) speaking of teams, I (laughs) like this team, Um, to come outside of, you know, what I had done all my life and what I thought. That's a really good example, though, of taking a risk from what you believe you are. Mm. See, I think some of the barriers and, and boundaries we put on ourselves are the ones that hold us back. 100%. We would like for it to be our third grade teacher, but it's really who we, it's really us. And <laughs> it's so, easy to project it onto someone else. Yeah. I mean, like, much easier. I did not want to believe that I would be ever in love with a woman. And oh my God, what is that about? Not that I judged because I didn't, but I was like, how do you even go about that? And I'm not kissing some girl, you know, right. all that stuff. So when I started having feelings for you, I was like, this is just what is the matter with me? <laughs> what, yeah, what kind of default has happened in your system, you know? Isn't or, that interesting? Yeah. And and I will keep saying this for my LGBTQ community. I had I still was open to that. Of but course. I, but I wasn't it wasn't open, I wasn't personally. open to it for me. Right. And so the biggest risk I ever took was probably allowing myself to have romantic feelings for you. Mm-hmm. And you're the only woman I've ever had romantic feelings for. Yeah. Good. So far. So far. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so, Let's keep it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. I mean, I feel the same way, and I always find yeah. Let it me ask so you that. So that's the biggest risk you've ever taken. Yeah, for sure. And I'm so not so well known. I don't mean it that way. You're but so well known. <laughs> no, no, she's no. just out there shaking herself no. everywhere. I mean, I'm a easy, like an easy target for my personality. Like, what do you mean? First child, people pleaser, yeah. Pollyanna, yeah. naive, sensitive. Like I just smart. I'm kind of a brilliant. 
I'm all obvious. Those no, not all those things. But I think I'm kind of obvious mm -hmm. in that way that it would seem highly unnatural for me to be in a relationship with you. So that risk looks, I think, even more egregious than <laughs> it does on your side. Yeah. I don't know. You you're think I'm stronger. allowed for some reason no. but you're not as strong as me? Of course, yeah, I, can of. Out, I can outdo you on some- Everything. Uh, well, physical so far. See, that is really my gauge on how old I am. If I can still kick your ass physically, <laughs> then I'm good. Not that I would ever do that, but you know. Okay. But anyway, we digress on that because you're competitive. I think if you just put the two of us as little um, figurines <laughs> mm -hmm. on a chessboard, like, yeah. you would be more likely- to, to do this. Do this. And That's I true. would be less I likely. will give you that. Okay? I agree. Yes. I agree. And so the interesting part <laughs> is that it just was so much more natural for me to do. I know. Me falling you in love like with you were like a born was lesbian. like no this is a, yeah, absolutely crazy. what's going to happen. Yeah, no you were you were, that's the thing that's shocking. I mean, you're, I know. you're very intelligent and you're also very self-assured when you know your feelings, you don't even question them. When I know, uh, of course yeah. I question all of it. I was right, like, this right. can't be right. So yeah, right. You, that's that's true. That's a good point you just made about yourself you. too. Mm -hmm. You're pretty brilliant. You're wise. I you're, did not make those points about myself. No, no, no. I'm making them because <laughs> you. you're all of the other things you said, mm -hmm. being like Pollyanna and all that, and kind of like yeah. <laughs> so, but you're also brilliant and wise. And, Thank you. Uh, freaking stubborn when you make up your mind, which is like, okay, no, I'm definitely a lesbian, so I'm going with it. Right. I'm like, okay. It's you. Watch Good out. Good luck with that. Good luck with I'm that. not sure how that's going to work out. Yes. You know? I mean, which is just so fascinating. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to kind of do the Rolodex of my life of other big risks. Yeah, other I, risks. Biggest risks. You didn't, you were not a risk taker. No. No. Because it's like I had it all planned out. Why? I don't know. That's who I am. Just like you yes, were in the crib true. shaking free. I was yeah. like, I'm in the crib and this feels nice. <laughs> I'm, in, and then, I'm in lotus position in my meditative state. Yes. Not quite. <laughs> not quite. Um, but just that path and I took it. Yes. And so that's just who I am was. Mm -hmm. And so it's just interesting. I mean, I guess you if you take the, the path we've so long, you're like, I got to get the Fuck off at this yeah. point. <laughs> and I don't mean that yeah. in a dramatic way as if, I, you know, being with you is some like reaction mm -hmm. or rebellion even. It's 100%. If if it was, it would a have conscious already gone good away. choice. Exactly. <laughs> right. I think somebody said that. And said, it's been five years. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Five years. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good ones. Oh my God. I love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> I have to say that. Yes. Um, um, so, yeah, know. keep going. What, what, what I don't know. We? I just think it's interesting. Yeah. I'm not a risk taker. And I would think if you look at the, the risk that we took to I'm be sorry. together on you paper, are that's doing huge. everything every day risk taker. You are, <laughs> you take risk every day, especially with business, especially mm. with me, with faith on faith that I'm going to, I'm your yeah. sole <laughs> income. Wait. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's taking a risk, trust me. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's a, you, you have faith that I'm making decisions mm -hmm. and that right. I'm including you, you in it. <laughs> you know. Uh oh. <laughs> and when you don't Anything have to faith, talk about? you let me know about it. And vice versa. Yeah. That would true. be bad. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think we'd ever get to that blind spot. Because we communicate so openly. Yeah. I mean, like that, What, like I mentioned, I'm pretty easy to read. So I can't go far without you being like, stop. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And we were talking to somebody today about, you know, this group of people that work together and they have these psychologists that come in and they talk to them. And we've never done that at Hilliard Street Method. They would probably have a field day if they came to us. But, um, There's yeah. A, you know, sometimes you just keep Pandora's box yeah. shut. But also... You can't do it when I'm when I'm the boss. You can't be all quiet and all what's That's it right. called when you're like passive aggressive. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you can't do that. Right. I'm not gonna do it with you. I'm just gonna not. I remember mm -hmm. before we were us dry, taking you out in the parking lot. You were real passive aggressive <laughs> with me one day because you got your fanny up because you thought you were not good enough or pretty uh -huh. enough or something. Mm -hmm. And exactly. I was like, oh my God, this is going to make me either throw up or I'm going to drag you out here and I'm going to beat the crap out of you. I went outside and I told you how great you were. Mm -hmm. And you were like, no, I'm really not. And I'm like, either you're going to acknowledge who you are or you're not going to be on the team. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's out of love. 
Now, again, 100%. that was before this. No, but you I, that's are, the way I deal yeah. with employees. <laughs> I don't but, beat the crap out of anybody. Sorry, I should not have said that. I would never do that. No, but your investment in that, mm-hmm. I think what you saw in me, and I don't want to speak for you, mm-hmm. was my commitment and loyalty. And Well, you're brilliant. It's like that psychology degree you have. You use that very well <laughs> on me. And so there's always been something in our friendship, in your leadership, mentorship mm-hmm. for me that has allowed me to be way more open to A, express myself and B, kind of like wear that hair shirt that you say, like to yeah. beat myself up. Yeah. And then it's, it's like, I time. allow you then to help me through that. Right. It's an interesting well, it's just, dynamic. Yeah. That's just something that's fearless. I'm, I, there's a fearlessness that I would rather mm-hmm. have an employee I, in my business. I would rather have somebody yell at me and tell me I was the most horrid person in the world than to sit and be passive aggressive. So I'm like, that just doesn't. You don't play that game. We don't play. We don't play at Hilliard City Method. We just don't. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I was going through a lot internally, emotionally, yes. and you put up with it is what oh, I'm yes, trying to Oh, yes, of say. course I did. I, I, that's not it. I, I mean, I honor your yeah. anybody's emotion. I honor the confusion of life. I honor not being able to express oneself mm-hmm. at any given moment, meaning remember the whole be powerful sign, owning your space. I honor your space. I honor everybody's space. And I'm never going to put you down. No. What I'm going to try to do is lift you up, up by being the mirror of what I see you seeing. I saw you looking at this specific person and you saying, I'm just not as good as her. I'm not as pretty as her. She does it better than me. And I'm like, hold up. Mm-hmm. She's great. I agree. All those things you just said, how great she is, she's great. It's time to look at you. That's what we should do for yeah. each other is hold our mirrors up for each other. Let me mirror back to you how incredible you are. You know, No matter where you are in your day or what's going on in your life, you're going to be okay. Yeah. You just are. Mm-hmm. I mean, we already are. We're born that way. And then we talk ourselves into the other things. So, Or somebody right. else talks us into it and we believe it. And then we keep self-talking. Yeah. That. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily go away all the way, all the time. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I just thank you for being that person for me. I'm glad I was. Are. Am. Is. Happening Am now. Am I was where BB and BB. All right, so did we answer the question? Yeah, today? I, I was you just said, curious. You had been talking about mm-hmm. obstacles and kind of women in business, and right. I wanted to know what your passion is freedom, right? How you deal with setbacks, freedom and for risks. me, but also freedom for everyone for, mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. And that's, um, I was got to be on that panel last week over at Neiman's, Neiman Marcus, and one of that's really what I was trying to say when somebody asked me a question. There's fear in the world that is trying to put women in a safer place for the energy that's more male. Right. I'm going to quit using the word patriarchy since it scares you. She Every time I say it that word, scare me. she's like, oh my God, she's going to go on a tangent about the patriarchy. That energy is very much, let's put women and girls in their place mm-hmm. and let's not discuss their problems, their issues, their health. Let's pretend that doesn't happen and you just go along and get along. That's going on all over the world. And so- we have to speak out every single time, not not just for us, but for all right. the women. The more we speak, the more other women hear. The more they hear, the more they speak. The more it, it's yeah, a, amplification. It just goes. We've got to. That's a good word. We've got you. to amplify each other. We've got to amplify each other. And it is not about being a rebel. It's not about going against anything. It is simply about the freedom of self expression and self autonomy on our bodies. Don't you think? I do. <laughs> so okay, well done. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Are we all? Are we done? Are we? Yeah. Do we have anything else going on? I'm sorry. We have Winston Salem Hilliard <laughs> Studio Method opening this weekend. <laughs> this coming week, it is wide open and Party it is time. open for business. And sh- they're doing really good deals, just like we did when we were yep. opening in Charlotte. You're gonna love it. You guys from Winston Salem are people that just want to go up there and Greensboro. see these exciting. There's such a good team up there. Lucy Boston, Skelly. You're trying to get all our I, double Lucy, names. Lucy, I'm sorry. Name, I know. Oh, wait, I'm gonna do it right now. Lucy Noel. Croxton Skelly. Got it. Bam. Boom. She's got it going on. In and congratulations. So that's happening. To yeah. you. Thank you. Your Thank first you. and second you. business? How does yeah. that work? It was anyway. not my first. I, we had another business that we swore, sold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this is really exciting. This is the baby getting out of the crib. 
No more no bars. No more bars. No more bars. <laughs> and she is in Winston-Salem. And Ready to roll. so excited. Yeah. Aww. We'll be up there soon. Yeah, we'll be there this Saturday. Party time. Oh, heck yeah. All right, check it out. Check it out, all you Winstonians. Mm-hmm. Greens Can't wait to see you. People in the neighborhood, check us out in Charlotte. Yes. Send us your questions. Yeah, please Speak do. Speak pipe. Hit the link in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Ask us a question, anything you like. Thank you for – I think you interviewed me today, and that's that it's was fun. fun. Love you. you. I love you too. Bye. Bye, y'all. Thanks for listening to us today, wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, you can now find our podcast on YouTube. Yeah. If you liked it, please share, rate, and review. We love five stars. And we hope you'll work out with us online or in studio at hilliardstudiomethod.com. Bye.